In spiritual warfare, we as human beings, our enemies, our, our unseen principalities and powers, as it says in Ephesians 6.12, you all know about that. And the word tells us in 1 John 5.19 that what? That we are, uh, the whole world lies in the sway of the wicked one. We're children of God, it says. We are children of God. And the whole world lies in the sway of the wicked one. So even though we are children of God, we're not above being uh, harassed by the devil, are we? Mm -hmm. And also consider what it says in Ecclesiastes 7.20. It said, there's not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. So therefore, mankind is susceptible. You could say mankind, mankind is inclined to sin, all right? And obviously, that doesn't sound good. I mean, none of that sounds good. Certainly, as uh, human beings, we're dead in the water. We're just dead in the water when it comes to being able to overcome sin on our own. I would add that, on our own. And I'm sure we all see that by now. That's why it's so gratifying to know Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's so good to know Jesus. It's so, it's so wonderful to know the one true God, the God of oh, Abraham, yes. Isaac, and Jacob. It's good to know that Jesus has made a way for us to come out from under the weight of sin. Amen. Amen. He's made a way for us. Okay. Isaiah 61 and 1 uh, says that he came to set the captives free. Thank you, Lord. Jesus comes to set us free. And in Matthew 11, 20, 28, he says, all who labor and are heavy laden, come to me. Right. Mm -hmm. He come to me. He said, and I'll give you rest. That means if you want your addiction taken away, come to Jesus. Amen. All right. If you want your schizophrenia to go away, come, come to, to Jesus. Jesus. If you want your uh, 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 homosexuality or promiscuity and, and sexual uh, 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 behavior, mm -hmm. then Jesus can solve all of that yes, and more. Yes. See, that's a good thing about it. But you've got to be willing to come to him. Amen. Come to Jesus. We've got to be willing to come to him. See, Jesus is for real. Mm -hmm. Jesus is truth. And therefore, Jesus has opted uh, to give us, uh, uh, to, to lead and guide us into all truth. That's Thank what his word Lord. says. That's what it says in John 16, 13. He says that uh, um, uh, the, when the spirit comes, he's going to lead us. He's going to lead you into all truth. That's what the word says. And I want you to know that the spirit which Jesus is speaking of is none other than the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know that? Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit of God. The same one that's spoken of in 1 John 2, 27. So let's go there, as a matter of fact. Let's get a little pastor back up and let her uh, take us to 1 John 2, 27. First and this passage... Uh, um, Let's speak on that for a minute. Go ahead, Pastor. Read that for us. First John 2.27 tells us, Please. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. See, this passage tells us how valuable the Holy Spirit is to us because sometimes we don't speak about the Holy Spirit enough. We get to thinking that it's all about us. We get to thinking that we can handle things. But it says right here that we stand to receive an anointing from the Holy Spirit. An anointing. Do you know that God's anointing transcends time, space, college, different things that we get from the world, uh, wisdom and knowledge, that Holy Spirit can anoint you and give you what you need when you need it. That's why it's so important that we come to Jesus. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying we not, we're not supposed to study because we do, of course. He says, study to show yourselves approved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so, so again, uh, we're supposed to always right. study, uh, but the point is, God gives us something more, something deeper, that a professor can't give you something deeper 
that uh, uh, the trends of man won't understand, okay? Mm -hmm. He gives you the Holy Spirit the living Holy in Spirit. you Hallelujah. that take you to the next level yes. that can, when you're tired and you feel like you can't go any further and, and they say, you know, the doctor said, well, you know, that's about it because things are shutting down and the Holy Spirit is talking to you, saying the spirit of a man will sustain him in times of sickness. Yes. See, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. He comes over you. Hallelujah. And so this scripture tells us that he's our teacher. Amen. Thank you, Holy it's Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches Thank us you, through Spirit. his anointing. We are uh, we're taught not just some things, but what? All, all things. things. He's going to teach us all things. Thank That's what this Holy word Spirit. says right here. I couldn't leave that alone because it's right here saying they teach you concerning all things and it's true. He said it's not a lie, and just as he it has taught you, you will abide in him. So guess what? If the Holy Spirit is living in you and you're a child of God, we are going to be abiding in the Holy Spirit. That's what this is telling us right there. That's what uh, uh, we mean. We're learning. Uh, um, we've been learning for the past two weeks. We've been learning about God's tutelage and instruction. That's what God means by giving us this valuable sermon series, which speaks of God's training camp. You don't have to go anywhere to get in his camp. You just have to be available to Jesus. See, he's going to train you where you are. See, see, it's not like football camp where you got to go. If you pray for the Patriots, you got to go to New England and you got to be there and you play, pray where, wherever you play for. If you if you're a baseball player, you're playing the San Francisco Giants, you got to be in San Francisco. God is everywhere at one time. Amen. God trains you where you are right now, okay? That's right. You ain't got to go nowhere. You don't have to get a bus fare. You don't have to get on a plane. God's going to get to you if you say, I accept Jesus Christ. Camp starts right now where you are, amen? You just have to make yourself available mentally in this camp. See, the Spirit of God is set up in the lives of all saved, born-again believers of God. All right? He's set up in you so that he can teach you the various fast, uh, 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 nuances or the, I'm trying to say facets, the, the, the facets of learning, especially in reference to spiritual warfare. We got to learn about that thing. You, we need to know that the Holy Spirit is in place. He's in place at the ready, poised, and accept, accessible to us. Thank you, Holy See, he's, Spirit. He's right there waiting for us, you know. He's like a drill sergeant. He's standing right there saying, are you ready, troop? Are you ready to roll? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to learn? Okay, let's get cracking. That's the Holy Spirit. He's right there with us. He wants us to learn how to become better at handling spiritual conflict. And we need that, amen. Now, last week, we had a hot topic. We had a, we had a topic last week. Boy, we left off talking about how important it is to be able to what? Submit during spiritual warfare. Oh, yeah. Hmm? And that may sound contradictory on, uh, at, at, at first, at first uh, uh, hearing. It may sound like an oxymoron because it would seem that in fighting or in warfare, the last thing you would want to do is to submit mm -hmm. or give in. Isn't that right? You don't, when it's come to fighting, you don't think about giving up, okay? Mm -hmm. And while that's correct in the physical or natural sense, when it comes to spiritual warfare, guess what? The Lord teaches us a better way of fighting. He's going to teach you a better way. When it comes to fighting uh, in the spirit, uh huh. the Lord says, I'm going to teach you a better way. He told me that personally. Personally, when the Lord came to me, when I was still doing police work, when I was still on the street, he said, your way is sloppy, son. He said, let me be your cover officer. He said, I'll show you a better way. And did he ever. Ooh. Did he ever. Okay, so first of all, yes, she, uh, Pastor Alisa just said that's what police officers need. Today. Oh, yeah, today. I've talked to officers. I've talked to over 300 CHP officers and, and, uh, of the state, and, and they were very interested in how do you keep your poise? How do you handle a situation? I said it starts with God. 
It starts with Jesus. Any officer who feels like he has to pull the trigger, know where your help comes from. Know that Jesus can handle it. Know that, 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 that. You see, if you're training with Jesus, when the confrontation arises, you're not so apt to go to from point one, from point A to point Z. Yes. See, Jesus has yes. B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, R, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y. Before you get to Z, see, you may not ever have to pull that trigger. Matter of fact, when you're dealing with Jesus and you and you uh, uh, normally have to pull a trigger, guess what? The man will turn around and say, I'm giving myself up to you. I, I, I'm sorry I did it. They'll apologize sometime before it even happened. I've seen it. It's happened to me several times. And see, uh, uh, granted, we have the opportunity, we have the right to take a life as officers. But Jesus says, Jesus, Jesus says, I, I want not one to perish. Mm -hmm. Even that one you got that you got prone down on the ground, I don't want him to perish. Even that one that just robbed the bank, I don't want him to perish. Even some that have taken other people's lives, I, I lock them up, but I don't want them to perish. I want to save him, and I'm going to use him for my glory. So, so when we line up with Jesus, we have a chance to do it God's way. God's way instead of the way of the world. I'm not telling you you'll never pull the trigger. I've pulled triggers before. But the Lord saved me. I never had to take a life. Shot a dog, but I didn't kill him. Okay? <laughs> but <laughs> but the, and that was before I knew the Lord. So, so, but when the Lord came, he showed me a better way because the Holy Spirit was rolling with me. The Holy Spirit was sitting beside me. The Holy Spirit was getting to the call before I got there. So when I get to the call, the Holy Spirit had calmed things down. The Holy Spirit had people Thank giving up and nobody knew what was going on. You see what I mean? This is spiritual warfare. Devil wants to take lives. Jesus wants to save lives. Huh. That's, what, that's what I'm talking about. So first of all, Submission, then, can be applied to a host of different variables when it comes to fighting in the spirit. Now, last week we looked at James 4, 7. James 4, 7, where it was explaining that we are, submit, we are to submit to God and then resist the devil if we want that devil to flee. Can't do it backwards. Can't call yourself uh, uh, resisting the devil if you haven't submitted to God. <laughs> Huh? James. That's what happened to the, the, who was it? The seven sons of Sceva? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they when they challenged the devil, and the devil said, Jesus I know, well, Paul I know, but who in the world are you? See, you got to line up with the Holy Spirit. See, you got to submit to God, then resist the devil if we expect him to flee. All right, yeah. all right, keep that in mind. So we get that part. Most of you know that we're, 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 we are to obey God's commands. Amen? Amen. If we expect to see progress in our lives concerning spiritual warfare or spiritual growth, however you want to term it. But as we saw last week in the area of marriage, for example, oh, that was a hot one there. We, we talked to... We talked about marriage. Why are you looking at me, Pastor? Why are you looking at me, I Pastor? I said marriage and she started looking no, up why at, you looking at me, Pastor? Trying to make a brother nervous. I'm not nervous. I got the Holy Spirit in me. <laughs> why are you looking at me, Pastor? <laughs> so we talked about, I always sweat. We talked about submitting to God and how um, it seems to take on added meaning when that concept is applied uh, to Ephesians 5, doesn't it? Yes. Remember that? That's the section which men love because in this section it says that the wife is supposed to do what? Surrender. What's she supposed to do, Pastor? Surrender. She did say surrender. I'm not taking you <laughs> prisoner. What it said you're supposed to do. <laughs> it says submit, right? It said the wife is supposed to submit to her husband. But watch this before y'all start throwing me brick offerings. Before, <laughs> Watch this. The wife, the wife uh, uh, loves the second half. This is the part of Pastor Annalisa loves, which says that the husband is to love the wife even as he loves his own body. Amen? Okay? Amen. So, uh, it's clear that in order to come out victorious in the daily course of marriage, both parties, the man and the woman, have to be willing to do what? Submit. Submit. To be submissive. Now here's the, here's, here's the million dollar question. But submissive to who? To 
to the Lord. Uh, why are you reading my paper? <laughs> I'm not. I'm reading you. We have to, I'm reading your we, eyes. We have to be, that she's right though. We have to be submissive and submit to God. Amen. That's it. That's part of the uh, deal. We don't want to submit because we don't want to submit to each other. We don't want to give in. In a, in a confrontation or a quarrel, you want to be right. You don't want to give in to the person. But God says, give in to me. Amen. He says, will you love that person for me? Oh. Can you love that person like I love you? Yes. Hey, can you forgive her? Can you forgive him like I always forgive you? Hallelujah. Can you forgive that person over and over and over and over again? Can you forget that past and lean toward the future and like when I like I do with your future? That's what the Lord is saying. And uh, uh, but we have to submit to do that. See, and it's good. It's agreeable and admirable if, if we're willing to be peaceable toward one another. But in the heat of a dispute. When, when either when, when where uh, either the husband or the wife or both are in the flesh, someone has to be strong and mature enough to say, "Wait a minute." Wait a minute. Someone has to be uh, mature enough to see the big picture, right? Amen. And do what? Submit. To submit to God. Submit to God. Submit to God and and let things calm down by saying, "Hey, hey, 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 time out. Can we just pray?" Can we just pray? I don't want to pray, but but the Bible says to pray. See, if, if somebody can do that in the heat of battle or, or say, you know what? Wait a minute. You know what? Devil messing with us. The devil is messing with us right now. The devil is busy right now. Let's talk to the Lord. Huh? You don't want to talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. Can we both talk to the Lord? How about that right now? You see what I mean? Now, sometimes you, you both may need to grab your Bibles and just take a seat. Just both. Just grab your Bible and take a seat. In other words, take off your boxing gloves and put on what? Righteousness. Yeah. Amen? Take off them fighting gloves like you in the, in the ring and, and, and put on a robe of righteousness and say, Honey, can I read something to you? A robe of love. See? And, and sit down and read that Bible. Yes. See, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that that's one thing that will stop those demons in their tracks. They'll stop them demons and they'll be telling the lady, talk about him now, talk about his, talk about his father because he just like that old bum who left him. Tell him. And the devils be giving each other high fives. Then they look at the husband and say, well, talk about her. She's just like your old mother-in-law. You know you can't stand that old bag. I'm just saying what they might say. Don't y'all take that the wrong way. <laughs> I love my mother-in-law. She wasn't no old bag or anything like that. She didn't look nothing like a sack. She was kind of wide as a box, but she didn't look like a sack. <laughs> but anyway, no, I guarantee you that's one thing that will stop those demons in their tracks. Because when you do that, they go, what? Did he say that? He actually grabbed the Bible. Oh, man, she's grabbing it, too. Ah, let's go next door. Woo, and then go right through the wall and go mess with your neighbors. You know what I mean? So this is something that that uh, uh, will stop demons and devils in that track. The word of God, that's what Jesus used, right? He used the word, huh? He used the word. He said, it is written, okay? So when you're arguing with somebody and when you're having a disagreement, don't talk to the person. Talk to the Lord. Don't use your reasoning. Use the word, okay? That's what you do. Isn't that what Jesus did when Peter said something off the wall? And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. In other words, he said, move over, Peter. I need to talk to that devil that's affecting you. Yes, you yes. see what I mean? I need to talk to him, okay? Yes. So that's, uh, that's what I mean. It'll stop disagreements yes. in their tracks. Those demons, it'll, it'll stymie them, especially when it comes to disagreements in your marriage, okay? Yes. After all, when it comes to marriage, there's a reason it's called holy matrimony. 
Huh? There's a reason it's called holy matrimony. God designed marriage to be holy because God himself is holy. Amen. He said, this is holy matrimony. I'm holy and your marriage should be holy. But you see, the devil is evil and unholy. Huh? That's why he hates the concept of marriage, especially holy marriages. He doesn't like them. OK, he, he, he wants an uh, 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 illegitimate marriage. He wants a, he, he'll take a marriage between two men or two women because it's because it's not right. And he knows that he doesn't want holy matrimony because he's not holy. OK, but God said that this is what this this is the, my idea of marriage. So we need to understand uh, uh, that uh, true submission, how true submission to God works especially in marriage. I'm not going to stay there because we talked enough about it, I, I think. And here's something else that we that will help couples in their marriages when it comes to submitting. Pastor, take us to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, Amen. verses 4 seven. to 7. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. I wanted to add something, but I'll, I'll add it later. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13, this is a love chapter. I love it, love it, love it. 1 Corinthians Don't 4. Don't read the whole chapter now. <laughs> We only have time for the old chapter. I, have to, I gotta watch her. You know, Thirteen, first. four through seven. It says, "Love suffers long uh -huh. and is kind. Mm -hmm. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Mm -hmm. Does not behave rudely. Mm -hmm. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity." but rejoices in the truth. Okay, all right. Can we go on? I yeah, I said, uh, then I said to seven, right? Mm -hmm. Bears all things. Bears all things. Believes all believes things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Hopes all things. Endures. Endures all things. All things. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. See, love. Hey, you have a seat. It's all right. Love. Okay. Love. Have a seat, love. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, so, um, um, look at love as a, as a distance runner, not a sprinter. Huh? Uh, look at love in the long term and not the short term. That's what we're looking at here. Uh, if you were to categorize this passage for marriages, uh, I would note it or label it with the letter CD. These few verses right here, the whole chapter really, but these few verses right here stand to, uh, uh, to me, I would label verse 4 to 7 as CD, Conflict Diffuser. That's what it is to me. It's a conflict diffuser. Because if you do one or two of these things, you're going to help your marriage. If you can suffer long, you're going to help your marriage. In verse 4. If you're kind and you don't envy, huh? and, and, and you don't get puffed up, upset, hmm? If you don't behave rudely, even though your spouse or somebody may be behaving rudely to you, if you can hold it down, don't let them provoke you, man, you're halfway there. Hmm. Sister, you are halfway there. If you can do these things with that old hard-headed man, you are halfway there. <laughs> okay? If, if you can just uh, 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 bear for a while, as it says in verse 7. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You're hoping. <laughs> You're hoping he'll get himself together. You're hoping that she'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. You're hoping they won't listen to their friends and let your friends run your house. You're hoping that you'll pray because you believe all things, hopes all things. If you don't behave rudely, say you rejoice not in iniquity, but you rejoice in the truth. So you just keep praying, praying, praying the truth of God, the verses of God. And you're praying those things and you're believing that your marriage is going to get better. You watch that thing turn around. Amen. You watch it turn around. God knows what he's doing. Amen. So, so this is what we're talking about. Uh, to be able to see the big picture and submit to God. Submit. In the love chapter, these verses diffuse things. Because I guarantee it, if husbands and wives, like I said, can just do one or two of those things, the peace of God comes almost immediately. Have you ever tried to punch a paper bag? I have. See, I was a fighter and I hit walls, trees, uh, everything, every day. I had punching bags on trees, 
and I even punched. I was so punchy that <laughs> that growing up when I went to Pekin Cleaners in Chicago, Illinois on 39th Street, uh, they would put your clothes in a plastic bag and I would hang the bag up because I was too poor to have a punching bag, but I had to punch, punch, because the pastor was punchy, dog. So anyway, I used to punch, <laughs> I used to punch that bag. And it's hard to punch something that doesn't give you any resistance. Mm -hmm. So your hand just sort of goes through the bag, but the way you get to work out is because you're punching the air and you're punching not to feel the pressure, but you're punching for accuracy. But it's, my, my point here is saying that uh, um, it's hard to fight something when that thing won't give you resistance. Amen. No resistance. You see, the devil likes to stir the pot. He likes for you to give resistance. When disagreements take place, the more discord that takes place, the better for the devil. The more argumentative you can become, the more you want to stand on and prove that you're right, the more he can get the, more he can get the uh, disagreement underway. Mm -hmm. That devil, remember now, he's prowling about. He's prowling, okay. seeking to devour the husband and the wife by getting both to retaliate against one another like two fractions. A negative five plus a, plus a positive five equals zero, doesn't it? They cancel each other out. So do you notice that God's plan is an effective alternative? Praise God. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So remember, uh, by, by employing uh, these principles, what are you doing? What are, you do, you're doing two things. By employing these principles, then we're going to leave it alone, you are... Uh, uh, Conflict diffusing. Conflict diffusing principles. You're exhibiting love to one another, but more than that, you are submitting to God. Right? Mm -hmm. You're submitting to God. So, all right. So, we see now how submitting to God works in the institution of marriage, but like I said last week, how about in other areas of our lives? Come on, y'all. Put your seatbelts on. How about in other areas of our life? Let's take a ride, okay? okay? Because believe me, there are many situations that arise in our daily activities which challenge our submitting to God. Now, we could bring up a whole bunch of them. And sometimes my mind just goes blank and I can't think of all of them. And the Lord will give me one or two. Uh, or sometimes I have a whole host of them and then I'll uh, get sleepy. So, uh, I'll, uh, but, but I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you what the Lord gave me. Uh, there are many situations which arise in our daily activities which, which will challenge our submission to God. Uh, for example, here's one. I know we all have faced this one. You know how we feel when we're driving along. You had a good day. You, you may have even had a good lunch. You may have had a... Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe your birthday. I mean, whatever it is, you're riding down the road and uh, uh, um, and someone for no reason just cuts you off. Cuts right in front of you. Maybe you got your coffee in the little cup holder and you have to hit the brakes and the coffee spills all over you, okay? All right. Uh, what happens? Let me guess. You just smile at that person, don't you? You just smile and you say, Praise God, brother or sister. I will share my space with you. Pull in front of me anytime. I'm the one. Praise God. And you wave. Huh? Is that what we do? Not hardly. Not hardly. God bless you if you do. Okay? But usually that doesn't happen. I don't think so. What normally happens is something like this. You, you honk your horn. You lay on the horn for about 15 seconds. Okay, you do something like that, right? You you honk your horn, or and instead of smiling, your face becomes contorted. Your smile could go start going down like that. Your face becomes so contorted that the vitriol in your heart has gone up to your face, and they just pull your face down. And you get contorted and it starts bubbling up because it's all bubbled up to your face. And many times it goes. <laughs> yeah, it'll make, it'll make you slobber. It'll make you slobber. 
<laughs> okay? It'll get spittle all over you. And then after that, it'll bubble up some more. And, and before you know it, because now your brain is affected, <laughs> your brain is bubbling, and it's sending impulses, and your brain's going to go tell, tell the word, go back to the mouth and come out. And tell that person what you need to say because they are wrong. So it starts coming out of your mouth. And before you know it, you're hearing these things out of your mouth. You're not speaking in tongues, but your tongue is wagging. <laughs> coming out of your mouth because you're so angry that the person pulled in front of you. And even some obscene language may come. I don't give a real brother about you. Vile language. Does any of that sound familiar? Y'all say, I don't get mad like that. I don't well, get mad like that. Well, you don't drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that's an example. Maybe not to that point, and, and, I, and praise God, I pray that that doesn't happen. But the truth is, what I'm trying to get to is that if we do not diligently seek to be totally submitted to God, that devil and his demons will fire those darts at you at the right time. When you're least suspected, you're elected because the devil wants you what? Rejected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. See, that old devil sizes you up. He sizes you up and he, he, he knows how you are. He looks at you and he looks at the Lord and he says, Lord, he's easy. Lord, she's easy. She ain't all you said she was, and he ain't all you said he is. Let me add him, Lord. Let me sift him like wheat. Hmm? That's what he does. Oh, yeah. He might even say, please. I guess the devil says, please. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing on that one. But I know that he's trying to get us and I know he can't do anything unless the Lord let him, right? So he's got to go to the Lord. Yes. Huh? Like in Job where he said, Lord, what, so what you doing? He said, oh, just walking to and fro across the earth. See who I can mess with. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he was saying. See who I can bring down. See who I can make a liar out of. <laughs> See who I can make leave the church. <laughs> <laughs> See who I can turn over to alcohol or adultery. I'm working on him. Oh, that's what he does, right? And he knows the right time when to fire that thing at you. Mm -hmm. Seeing who I can make leave his wife. <laughs> See who I can make leave her husband. That's what he's doing. That's what he does. Okay? We've got to know that. And unless we've been earnestly doing our workouts in God's camp, in God's spiritual warfare camp to fully submit to God, there's going to always be a chance that will be used by the devil. Speaking of the devil. Always a chance of that. In other words, unless we're fully submitted to God, we'll find ourselves submitting to the devil. Where is he right now? Where is he? Unless we're fully submitted to God. We'll find ourselves submitting to the devil. Remember, 2 Peter 19 says, By whom you are overcome, by him you are also brought into bondage. By whom you are overcome, by him you are also brought into bondage. Now that's it, so it pays, it pays. That's a very sobering scripture, all right? That's 2 Peter 2.19. If you're overcome by somebody, if you're overcome by these demons in a certain way and you keep doing a certain thing, guess what, you're their slave. I don't want to be a slave to anybody but Jesus. I don't want to be a slave to food. I don't want to be a slave to immorality. I don't want to be a slave to anger. I don't want to be a slave to violence. Been there, done all of that. I want to be a slave to Jesus. And the only way I know that I can be that is to totally submit. 
And I'm sure you all feel the same way. Uh -huh. That's why that's such an important scripture. That's an important scripture. Be sober and vigilant. That's what the word says. It pays to be sober and vigilant on the lookout for the enemy. Because after all, he's looking out for you, isn't he? He's looking out to cost you, isn't he? He's looking to get you, isn't he? He's looking to sneak up on you and fire a dart when you least expect it, right? So we need to be looking out for him. But more than that, we need to, we need to have our game together. I'm going to tell you a little something. I'm going to tell you a little something that you can take with you. When I was a fighter, when I was fighting, uh, doing ring work and things like that, that's one thing. In the ring, heavyweight boxers and even martial artists, they weigh you so that it's a fair fight. You fight somebody your own size, right? Heavyweights like Mike Tyson fight heavyweights. Lightweights fight lightweights, okay? And that type of thing. But, mm, how shall I put this? On the street, it's different. When you get on the street, that person's not going to fight you fair in a conflict, right? You see these people get mad about wearing masks and they just start swinging on the other one? Uh, <clears throat> they don't say, well, let's wait. Well, I can't fight you because I'm bigger than you. They don't care. They hope they're bigger than you, okay? They don't care. They just want to win, all right? So, so, so it's not fair, all right? So what I learned in fighting, my instructor said, you never know who you're going to run up on or how many. So you never know how a fight is going to turn out. So when you go into this fight, you don't know what your opposition is going to be like. So you have to know what you're like. I don't know who might come up on me, but I know what I can do. You know why? Because I put in the time. That means that I got a 50% chance of coming out okay. You get that? If you don't know yourself and you've never been punched or you never know how you're going to react or you've never done the road work or you've never done the training, then you have no idea what might happen. But if you've done the training and you've thrown the punches and you've run your miles and you've done the work and the calisthenics and you've eaten the right foods for months, you know that you can last a while. Well, that's how it is in the spirit. If you've done the work in the spirit and you sat prostrate before Jesus Christ and you've learned the lesson, you don't know how many demons are going to come on you, but you know you're prepared because you've done the work. You sat in the camp. You showed up every day. You've been in service. You've been in Bible study. You're searching the word. You've been tested with your endurance. You You've been going through trials. You've come out of sickness. You were yes. at death's door. And Jesus yes. taught you how to stand. Yes. Yes. That's what Hallelujah. it is. Thank you, That's what it means to totally Thank you, submit Thank you. to God. Thank Not you, as punishment, but he wants to get us ready. Do we Thank see that? You, it's Thank the you, same principle. Thank you, Lord. It's the same principle. That devil is out to get you. You don't know what he can do. But you know what God can do through you. Amen? You know because you've trained with the very best. you got the best teacher who is the Holy Spirit. You've got Jesus saying, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You've got the Father, Son, Holy Spirit saying, when you see me, you see my son, you, you see my father. We're both in you. You've got all that going on. Thank you, Lord. I think you can make it. Thank you, Father. I think we can make it. As a matter of fact, I know we can all right, because we have him in us. Now let's look at another way the devil will come at you. Let's look at this, y'all. If you're not careful, the devil will come at you another way. And you'll find yourself contrary to God's instructions, especially as they pertain to submitting to God and expecting the devil to flee. Let's go again. Let's go to James again. James, the book of James is a very, very, very good book. Because it gives us a lot of uh, information that we can use about submission, about humility, about God lifting you up, and everything else. 
So let's go to James 4, Pastor, and just read verses 1 through 5 for us. Look at this, y'all. 4, 1 through 5 mm -hmm. says, This it is now. Where do wars and fights come from among mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Do they come from your desires for pleasure, mm -hmm. that war in your members? You lust and do not have, you murder and, and, and covet and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Mm -hmm. Adulterers and adulteresses, mm -hmm. do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, all right. So here James brings to the forefront that conflicts, let's cut to the chase, conflicts do arise and quarrels do take place. And guess what? At times, these quarrels and this conflict takes place in the lives of believers. Amen. That's right. Not just between husband and wives at home, but this can also happen in places where people are congregated. And guess what? It can happen right in God's house. You get confrontation, you get conflict in the church. And, and especially uh, depending on the mindset of a person, even in the house of God, it happens. Listen, there are those who set their eyes on positions, ministries, psalmists, ministers, uh, soloists, you name it, who outwardly, outwardly claim to be serving God, but inwardly have staked their claim and efforts to pursue their own personal desires goes on in the church hmm? for personal gain. But watch this. Pastor, tell us what it says in 1 Corinthians 10.31. Do you have that one? Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 10.31. I'm going to go right back to this. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. All right. All right. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Keep that in mind. Whatever you do has to be for God's glory. Mm -hmm. Whatever we do ought to be for God's glory, okay? Uh, uh, we're to do it for the glory of God, and that would, that, would, that would hold especially true since we're representatives of God. If we go to 2 Corinthians 5, 20, it says we're ambassadors for Christ, amen? We talk about that all the time. But I've told you a story before, right? I, I'll give you an example. I told you about a young man long before I was a pastor. I was on the board at the other church, I was on the board of trustees, and uh, 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 and the young man came in. And he claimed he claimed that he had a good voice. Say, I know I have a good voice. Everybody told me I have a good voice. He, he said they're always telling me I can sing, and I know I can sing, and I want to sing for the Lord. Okay, that's what he said. Uh, but when asked, uh, the question was that the Lord put across was if I asked you to, if we asked you to sing and go down to the low end of the city and sing down there, or to sing in that area, <clears throat> or one of the shelters, or one of the uh, places down there, would you be willing to go down there and sing? And you know what he said? He said, uh, uh, that's not what I had in mind. I'm talking about on, on, the, on the platform. See? On the stage. On the stage. With the bright lights. You know, he, that was what he had in mind about about singing for the Lord. Number one, it should have been about worshiping the Lord. It should have been about ministering for the Lord. You see, so uh, uh, it's not what, a, what uh, see. It's not about what's in our mind. It's about what's in God's mind. Amen. You see what I mean? And, and that's what we're talking about. Do all things to the glory of God. Uh, James said you don't get a lot of things because you, you're putting it in the wrong place. Mm. You're asking for it for the wrong reason. Mm. Okay? You're going about it the wrong way because you haven't submitted to God the right way so you don't know any better. And you don't even know you're doing it and the devil will do that to you. He'll do that to you. It's not so much about what, what you have on your mind. It's about what God has in his mind for you. Amen. 
You see what I mean? That's what it's about. Come on now. And it's possible to have multitudes of people in church, but how much church is in those multitudes of people? Mm. Amen. That's what he's saying. Truth is, only God knows. I'm not saying I know. Too much for me to try to figure out. I'm trying to learn about myself, let alone try to learn about everybody else. But I'll tell you what, you give me a formula, I'm going to try to follow that recipe. Okay? You give me the word, I'm going to live that word. I'm going to try my best to live it. Okay? And that's what we're talking about. You tell me to submit to God, I got to find a way to submit. I got to find a way to get with the program. It can't be about me. It cannot be about you. It's got to be about God. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's what he's talking about. Truth is, only God knows, but because the Bible tells us about the wheat being grown right alongside some tares, right? Amen. Both in the same place, right, growing next to each other. Who knows what's what? Only God, right? So today we see leaders in churches of all types, of all types. We're seeing many prosperity preachers. What's happening now? False teachers, they're being exposed. Hmm. Using the churches, selling holy water and blankets and everything else, you know, uh, espousing the word of God, yet living like the world, huh? And cavorting around, behaving the same as the secular world does, all right? That's what's been going on. But Jesus says, you'll know a tree by its fruit. By its fruit. You'll know a tree by its fruit, and certainly even though we as children of God may not uh, be able to know what's deep in a person's heart, God knows. God knows, and that's why he gives us Matthew 7, 21. Come on, Pastor, get, read that one line for us. What it says, Matthew, Matthew 7, 21 tells us. Uh, mm -hmm. Matthew, not everyone so, who says here it is. not everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. but he who does the will of my father in heaven Amen. thank you pastor you see church uh, in order to do the will of our father in heaven we must be fully submitted and committed right here on earth in order to do the will of our father in heaven we have to submit and commit right here in that endeavor. Amen. Does that make sense? Uh, now I'm going to flip back to James 4 and then I'll bring this to a close. James mentions several points which smell smells like the world. Mm -hmm. He mentions several points uh, which smells of the world yet it ensnares even some of us who profess to be Christian. You've seen it. We've talked about it. You know we pattern ourselves after the world. You know some of our most beloved gospel singers. They get right up, uh, right up under the world. They want a Grammy too. Mm -hmm. They want to dress in sequins and you know cleavage and that. Uh, uh -huh. And the men want to, you know, they want to do 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 just like the world. Huh? We want to do those things too. We may even have a puff or two, like the world, just to get them into the church. You know, we might even stop talking about Jesus and start singing about Him and and, and holy, holy, and never mention His name because we want to be like the world. Okay, mm -hmm. so He's talking about those things. Okay, things that smell like the world, and, and yet we profess to be Christians. But how do you know how committed one is to the Lord? Well, I'm going to give you another tidbit that you can take with you. Listen to this now. We ain't done yet. We're almost done. This is important. In the first commandment, the Lord commands that we have what? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Be quiet for about five seconds. Let that marinate. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That means no idols, no graven images, no gods, period. Now, people are saying, man, what you talking about? I don't serve no other God. I only know Jesus. I serve Jesus. Hear me out. Be careful, saints, because you know what? You can make almost anything your God. Hmm. Little G God. You can make almost anything an idol. Even your hobbies can become gods. 
If you've got a hobby that every Sunday you're into that hobby, and that hobby takes you away from doing God's work, you don't show up at church because you've got your hobby going on. Huh? If your hobby is knocking a golf ball with the boys on Sunday, guess what? You may as well start bowing to it huh? because you'll never be in church. If your hobby is something else uh, 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 on Sunday, uh, 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 then and it's taking the place of you doing God's work or being in place for the Lord or studying with the Lord. If your hobby is on Wednesday night and that's the Bible study night that the God of creation has put forth for us to move as a group, for your church to learn together, for your church to be tested together, for the unit in God's training camp to do push-ups spiritually together. But every Wednesday night, you're with the boys or it's movie night or car night or a drinking night or whatever night it is, fright night, because it should be frightful <laughs> to stay away from God. But if that's what it is, then then you're that thing becomes an idol. You see that? That thing becomes your God. Hmm? Y'all thought I was talking about bail. No, I'm talking about you bailing out of church. That's what <laughs> that's what we're talking about. How the devil will get you to bail, not following bail, okay? <laughs> so, so that's what we that that if you put those things in place of God, guess what? It can become an idol. And if that's you, guess what? You're gonna have to leave it alone. You're gonna have to move some things around so, so you can fully submit to God, and then maybe that devil will flee from you. Because, see, some people have been going through some things and wondering why the devil keep messing with me. Have you checked your idols? Have you checked what you do weekly? Go on and check and see what you're doing weekly, the reason the devil keeps messing with you. Now, granted, 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 the devil messes with all of us. You don't have to do anything for the devil to mess. You can do everything right and the devil mess with you. Okay? But some people are being slapped around by demons spiritually almost as if they're possessed. Why are they messing with you like that? Why? Maybe you haven't let go of some things. I don't know. Only God knows. That's what happened to the children of Israel. They kept getting, being messed over because they kept doing what? They wouldn't stop with the idols, would they? They wouldn't let go. They wouldn't fully submit to the Lord. We got some Israelite in us, y'all. We got some Israelite in us. After all, those are old-time relatives. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. You know they are. Huh? Cousin Jetty died way back in the day. Come on now. Y'all know that. And here's another little tidbit. I met a few people who claim to submit to Jesus. They claim that they submit to Jesus, yet they hail Mary. They say they're Christians, yet they pray to saints like Peter and like Paul. That's a no-no with God. That's not submitting to God. All right? We're talking about truth, right? You see how God is a jealous God. We're going to be required to do what, to, to stand for what we know. We, we got to get into that Holy Bible as led by the Holy Spirit. Remember I said the Holy Spirit will anoint you. Don't get in the Bible and think you're going to be able to figure everything out on your own. Take the Holy Spirit with you, okay? He's going to lead you into all truth, led by the Spirit, and commit to God who is Christ Jesus and stop praying to statues and dead people. Matter of fact, don't pray to people, period. Amen. Don't pray to no pope. No, you don't pray to the pope. Nope. You don't pray to priests. Eek. You don't pray to those people. No. And guess what? You don't pray to angels. Of course not. Uh, you're in essence, if you're praying to something, Guess what? You're worshiping that thing. Did we? Do you know that? If you're praying to the Pope, you're worshiping the Pope. Amen. You've given him the auspices of God. You are deifying a man if you're praying to that man. Did you know that? Amen. 
The devil knows it. See, prayer is worship. All my worship leaders, all my, all my prayer warriors, did you know? You know it. You know it. Prayer is a form of worship. Okay? So if you're praying to something or somebody, you're deifying them. And listen, friends, Satan and his demons will do just about anything to keep us from coming full circle in Christ. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He'll give you what you want. Satan will give you what you want as long as you're doing wrong. He sure will. Watch the Grammys. Watch them. Watch a lot of people who are millionaires, billionaires. He'll give you what you want as long as you're going against the word of God. I'll tell it like it is. I'm not surprised when I see comedians dressing up like women. Next thing you know, they got their own sitcom on HBO. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I used to be an actor. I know what goes on in the casting room. Hmm? I know how a lot of people made it. Hmm? The devil will give you what you want. And you'll be telling everybody you're blessed. You're not blessed. You messed. Okay? You might even be hexed, but you're not blessed because the devil's going to turn that thing on you. <laughs> Come on, y'all. We got to know this. People be saying that they're blessed. The devil will have you praying to Peter, Paul, and Mary. And I don't mean the God, the old rock group, okay? Now I'm talking about he'll have you praying to people. The devil will have you praying to demons and fallen angels saying that I'm your personal angel. Amen. You don't know who you're praying to. After all, after all, claiming that we're blessed and submitted to God. Do you see what's wrong with that picture? It's not biblical, you all. That's why we have to learn these things. That's why it's so important that we understand what it means to fully submit to God, to be submitted to God. How can we say we're submitted to God? We're, su we're submitting our prayers to statues. Hmm. We're submitting our prayers to idols. We're submitting our prayers to angels. In Revelation 22, 8, 9, it talks about John when he got his revelation. And you know what he did when the angel showed up? He fell at the feet of the angel. You know what the angel did? Did he say, I'm going to bless you, John? Did he say, John, pray to me every day? No, that angel rebuked John. He rebuked him. He said, don't you ever do that again. He said, I'm a fellow servant. Then he told, you know what he told John to do? Worship God. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's because that, that angel was sent by God. So we have to know these things. We have to know the ploys Praise that the devil, that the devil uses against us. Yes. yes. Don't get me wrong. Angels came to us. They ain't never said pray to me. They ain't never told us that. Never. And then the Lord showed us which angels were his and which angels were Testament. fallen angels. Mm -hmm. He showed us how to test the Spirit. I told you the Holy Spirit. We cannot get away from the Holy Spirit. Get rid of all the angels. We had to get rid of a lot of stuff. Books about angels, everything else. So, what I'm saying is that we want to be fully submitted to God so that God can use you and God can bless you according to His will. Amen? Mm -hmm. And uh, So, Pastor, uh, remind us of what the Word says in Hebrews 5, verses 12 to 14. We're almost done, y'all. Hebrews 5, uh, 12 to 14 tells us, mm -hmm. For though by, by this time you ought to be teachers, mm -hmm. you need someone to teach you again the first principle of the oracles of God, mm -hmm. and you have come to need milk and not solid foods. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he He's is a babe. A babe. Mm -hmm. But solid food belong to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of, of use, use have their senses exercised to discern both good and and evil. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you so amen. much. All right, see, God knows our deepest desires, and that's why we do what we do. This scripture told us that, yeah, we need to be teachers, but we need someone to teach us again the first principles of the oracles of God that have come to need milk and not solid food, uh, because we cannot discern 
good from evil. We got to be able to do that. And uh, so, so this is saying, and the devil will have you thinking that you know these things, but guess what? Your activity will tell the story. The fruit, your fruit will tell the story. So God knows our deepest desires. He knows why we do what we do. And if we're doing it for him or our own vain glory. Sometimes we can have such a quest for knowledge that we just go out on our own and we start doing different things. And, and uh, uh, we come up with our own ministries. We, we leave the Lord behind. We leave the church. We do what we want to do. Then we get into trouble and we can't handle it. Amen. I've seen that story. I've seen it, you all. I've seen people stay where they want to stay, do what they want to do, and now they're lost. Some out of their mind. Some taken over by spirits. Some went the way of the grave. We got to learn this, y'all. This is important, okay? Fully submitted to God. God knows our deepest desires and who we're doing it for. And through it all, he's willing to teach us. He's He's willing to teach us how to stand strong against that enemy, the devil, and those fallen angels. All this and more is available to us if we submit ourselves fully to Christ Jesus. And where do we do that? In God's training camp. Amen. Amen. So get in camp and stay in camp. Amen. 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 And to those of you who are watching,